To begin our adventure in the Iron Lands, the world of Iron Sworn, we need to do two things. We need to build a world and we need to create a character. We've done the world building, so let's set that aside and let's make sure that this character sheet gets both filled in and fleshed out. <laughs> Hey everyone, how are you? I'm Anderson, this is Kill 10 Rats, and today we will be creating a character for the first campaign of Ironsworn in the classic Ironlands setting that we created last time around. I'll be using the rules from the Lodestar supplement, which adds a sort of difficulty layer to the character creation. The default is perilous, there's a grim for the Joe Abercrombie fans among us. And even though I am one, I'm just gonna chicken out and go with challenging, um, which means I get a few more points to allocate. There's two reasons for that. One, the way I picture this character that I'm currently envisioning, that's a bit of a more seasoned veteran. Already seen a few things, picked up a few skills. So I'd like the character sheet to reflect that. And also having played Iron Sworn a little bit before, you'll still get your frequent misses and you'll be lucky if you get a weak hit. Strong hits are comparatively rare. So let's have a look at the sequence. To start off, we need a name. And this wouldn't be Iron Sworn if we just came up with a name, so we're gonna roll for it. 27. Kynan or Siora? Kynan is... Has a nice ring to it, I think. So let's go with Kynan. Mark that on our sheet. And next up comes the allocation of stats to express the capabilities and priorities of the character. We've got five stats, Edge, Heart, Iron, Shadow and Wits. Fairly self-explanatory, but there is a couple of bullet points giving us some ideas. So Edge is quickness, agility, prowess in ranged combat, heart, courage, willpower, empathy, sociability and loyalty. Iron is physical strength, endurance, aggressiveness, and prowess in close combat. Shadow is sneakiness, deceptiveness, and cunning, and wits is expertise, knowledge, and observation. So what kind of character am I picturing? I've already gotten a bit ahead of myself by saying I'm picturing a bit of a veteran, more experienced character who has perhaps already taken some lives and hardened himself in the Ironlands. Now the way I'm seeing Kainan, he's a bit of an advanced age late 30s, early 40s. And in our world building, we had uh, decided that the Ironlands are somewhat strewn with uh, ruins of a precursor civilization that are usually overlapping in territory with the firstborn. So it's a very dangerous business to go in there and try and exploit the resources that are left therein. So caches of iron, artifacts, that kind of thing. During the world building, I had this sort of idea in my head that there would be settlements that are specifically specialized in exploiting these ruins. And if I free associate a bit, I'm thinking what kind of person would be in that settlement? That would probably not be a settlement in a classical sense where it's a community of variety of, of tasks and roles in the settlement. It's more like a bandit camp, except they're not out for plunder from the trade caravans. They're more interested in um, progressing into the dangerous territory, into the ruins and making off with whatever valuables they can find and their height mostly intact. And I'm thinking that is what Kynan used to be up until very recently his inciting incident and his background vow step into place. I think with the band of ruin robbers, artifact hunters, he had a vow to them, but that band in my mind no longer exists. They overstepped, they got nearly wiped out and Kynan is one of the few survivors that somehow made it out. We'll find out how during play, I think. So he has a new background vow, he has a new inciting incident vow that we'll get to uh, 
doing play. But for now, we just understand that he ran with a group of these people for the last couple of years. And that kind of raises the question of why was he in that community? Because I envision that as more of a desperate man slash outcast scenario. So I feel like he has an original settlement that he used to belong to that he came up in. And that is where he is no longer welcome, where he no longer has ties. Or perhaps he still has ties, but they're not exactly positive ties. They might not be very happy to see him. So we have a bit of a desperate man on our hands who has lost most of his bonds and is probably eager to find some way to forge new ones and understand sort of how to turn his current situation into something positive. So where does it leave us in terms of stats in a roundabout way to uh, get back to what we actually set out to do? Is he more of a ranged combatant? Is he more of a close combat veteran? Considering the, the setup of the Ironlands and the ruins and, and ancient remnants that are mostly in the deep wilds or in areas that are not very hospitable, plus the presence of the firstborn, I feel like it's probably more likely that it was a sneaky affair. So especially considering that uh, Kainan was one of the survivors, perhaps if not the only survivor of whatever calamity led to the destruction of his former band, we should probably prioritize Shadow, either as his main stat or as one of the main stats. And then with Shadow, perhaps it's, it's more of a rangery type character where he sneaks and, and tries to pick off pursuers or targets from afar but he also knows how to help himself in close combat yeah so what we have to allocate in challenging starting stat allocation is a four two threes and two twos but if we prioritize shadow iron and edge then heart and wits both are at a reasonably low two I wonder if that fits with the image I have of the character. The hearts kind of make sense because he's not very used to having say regular normal interactions with other Ironlanders. It's either um, being part of that outcast band where it's probably a bit of a rough dealings with each other. The thing I'm struggling with is that Hart also has courage and willpower wrapped into it and I think it takes quite some courage and willpower to even make it this far in life if you're effectively outcast on your own. So perhaps we go uh, a bit lower on one of the physical combat stats. Question is which one do we prioritize? I think I kind of see him with a bow first and foremost. But I'm also thinking from a perspective of a very lonely character who's mainly in it for himself perhaps even a low heart score makes sense because he will when in doubt probably save his own hide and not stand up to whatever is threatening him or other people so perhaps bad habits kind of lower the heart score a little bit and we're we can kind of get away with this combination yeah i think i like that perhaps we can invest some experience into um actually improving that over time depending we run into situations that um, make that make sense where perhaps the heart score eventually um, increases. I'm perfectly fine with having a fairly low to middling wit score because he's probably not very educated, never had really much of an opportunity to pursue that. And while he is observant in a, in a way, he's not a good people reader. So that also makes sense as a kind of a compromised stat. So let's go with uh, highest shadow, edge and iron both three, and heart and wits both a two. Our starting health score is a five. So let's just mark that down quickly. And then we move on to spirit and supply, which are also both five to start with. Spirit, in this case, representing mental fortitude and supply, the general level of preparedness that is sort of an abstract of all the gear we're lugging around so we don't have to keep track of individual arrows and ropes and whatnot. And if we have a question of a specific item, we can always ask the Oracle during play. Next up, momentum, which is a representation of sort of our fair winds at our back or the resistance we're facing during our adventure. The uh, maximum at, to start with is 10 and the reset value is two. 
and we start our game at the reset value, so we start it with a 2. Right, so what's next? Technically next we would be putting down our vows, our background vow, the main quest, so to speak, that drives our character through the Ironlands to pursue whatever goal he has, and our inciting incident vow, which is the first quest we're going on. However, this is generally part of the first session, so we'll do that at the start or in the course of the first actual play session and adventure, and skip it for now. Just jot it down here, Kainan Bonds. We get to choose three background bonds, which represent our connections to other people or communities in the Ironlands. And we're also free to uh, leave some of these bonds as empty and reveal them during play as appropriate. So the way I'm picturing this, for instance, is that we do have um, former members of our band or perhaps also people from our old uh, settlement that we used to belong to that we can, depending on what the oracles tell us in the course of our adventures, encounter those in other places in the Ironlands. Perhaps an ex-member of the band that left before the whole gang was wiped out or some trader from the village that we're coming from originally that we can run into and that is positively inclined towards us. This might be sort of an ace up our sleeve in, in some um, dicier situations or just um, something we can pull out of the hat in um, storytelling to, to make for a more compelling narrative to build some connection to our past. So I'm definitely gonna go with two empty wildcards for the bonds and I'd like to flesh one of them out. Now, I'm not sure who we have in Kynan's life right now that he actually has a connection with and feels a connection to. Perhaps it's a community, perhaps it's a, a person. So I think we're just gonna ask the Oracle. So we have a likelihood table here where we can determine whether a question is 50-50 likely or almost certain, very likely, unlikely, small chance. I think um, in terms of the question we're asking, is our bond to a person? We have about a 50-50 chance. So 51 or greater, it's a person. It, it's barely a person. <laughs> so maybe it's not a human. Um, is it a human? Ooh, okay, so we're in the small chance range. I think if I reverse the logic of the oracles, that is something that is very, very unlikely. So maybe we actually have a connection to one of the firstborn somehow. Maybe that's also why we're surviving. Hmm. So generically, the firstborn that we have at our disposal are the elves, the giants, Varu, and trolls. I feel like the elves are the most numerous and likely to be the ones that we encounter in our artifact hunting past. So let's call that likely and see whether it pans out. It does. So it's an elf. Going by the name of 84, that is Hulata. All right. So what, what motivates this elf to be our friend or acquaintance more like, or someone that tolerates our presence enough not to immediately kill us. Probably more like that. Let's give this elf a, a character roll first. So we get a 92, which makes him a traitor. That actually makes a bunch of sense. So we have somebody who, who is some sort of traitor. I think I put this in um, quotation marks because of the concept of trade as the uh, Ironlanders live it is probably not something that the elves pursue the way I picture them, but this is perhaps someone where uh, our relationship with this person is more of a quid pro quo relationship. So we have something to give or we gave something and in return we acquired some level of tolerance and um, cooperation. Let's give him or her a goal as well. Let's keep it at a them for now so we don't have to decide immediately whether this is a, a Hulata Mr. or Mrs. Perhaps we don't even know considering elves are generally in the habit of wearing masks in the Ironlands, so we might not even be aware what Hulata has under their robes. 64, protect a person. So Hulata is looking to protect somebody. And that is what 
somehow involves Kainan in some capacity. Okay, so we may encounter Hulata at some point and find out more or use that as an adventure hook and eventually perhaps we've come across a person that might make a likely setup for being Hulata's chosen one or what, whatever we want to determine. But it an, it's a nice story hook and a nice bond that we share. So there we have our first bond and the other two I think are just gonna emerge during play and we'll encounter some remnants of the past. So we've envisioned our character, we've chosen a name, we've allocated stats, we've marked health, spirit supply, we've marked momentum, we have our bonds. Now what remains is to pick our assets. These are either skills you have, rituals you know, followers, companions you've acquired, or you know specific weapon moves, something like that. So let's have a look here. I have one um, path that I would like to give to our character in, in conjunction with the demise of the old band, which is spirit bound. And this reads, you are haunted by someone whose death you caused through your actions or failures. When you consult their spirit to secure an advantage or gather information, add plus one and take plus two momentum on a hit. On a weak hit, also endure stress, since you know, you're interacting with something relatively traumatizing. So effectively, we are somewhat haunted, a little bit haunted, and uh, we can also use that to our advantage, but it's a nice let's say almost companion that we bring along on our adventures uh, to remind us of the failures of our past, but also an, an interesting point to elaborate on uh, how did this person die, um, who were they? Perhaps we should give our, our spirit a name to begin with. So I think that's pretty much guaranteed to be another Ironlander. So let us find out who they were and see whether the name will reveal to us who we're dealing with here. So let's give it a look. 27. That's Kainan again. <laughs> hmm. Um, maybe not. Uh, the other 27 is Siora, which to me sounds like a female name. So let's go with that. Siora was a companion we had in our old band and then her death was somehow caused by us. Perhaps we can check for the action and theme oracles to get a general understanding of how Siora died. 83 is support. 63 theme is resource. Let's see what, how, maybe we can also flip this, like uh, support resource, resource sounds a bit mm, pedestrian to me. So I'm, I'm looking at what is the um, converse result of this, which Iron Sworn recommends you do. If you're not 100% sure what to do with a prompt, you can also reverse the die roll and have a look at what this says. And it says world, support world. Now that's interesting. Maybe. Kainan and Siora got themselves in way over their heads, meddling with some kind of artifact in a ruin that they understood a little bit too late was about to unleash some kind of horror on the world. And that while Kainan chose to run, Siora chose to sacrifice herself and perished in some forgotten tomb somewhere in the wild lands surrounded by firstborn just as Kainan was running away uh, not looking back and then ended up haunted by her. I think I like that better. So, so mark that down as sacrificed herself in an artifact hunt gone wrong to protect the nearby settlements from whatever horror was about to be unleashed. And now she periodically comes to pay a visit to Kainan and make him feel really bad about his actions. I like that a lot. Now as for the other ones, we've got a few more options here. I picked out a couple from the stack here that I find intriguing. One is Infiltrator, which kind of makes sense with the amount of shadow we have, which allows us to hide more easily. 
Another one is veteran, which reflects our combat experience or our general seasonedness as an Ironlander. And archer, which is a combat talent that makes it easier to uh, you know fight with a bow. I feel like the combat talent is probably a must, just so we don't take three paths. And then it's up between infiltrator and veteran. And I think we're more of a combat avoider than a combatant generally. So I'm gonna go with infiltrator. So I'm gonna go with infiltrator and discard the veteran. The next step would be to mark down any specific equipment that we have. There's kind of treasure possessions or something, but I think we start with very little, save the supplies that we need to survive. So we're not gonna have much in terms of that. And our vows will be spoken and illuminated and expounded upon in the first session. So as far as our character creation is concerned, we are now pretty much done. We have a Kynan who is an ex-artifact hunter who has a bond with an elven trader whose main interest in interacting with this horrible human is to protect the person. And the path of being spirit bound to Siora, a former companion whose death he caused by being a bit of a self centered coward running away from a emerging horror that was stirred up by them picking up an artifact in an ancient ruin where Siora just did the well heroic thing and sacrificed herself but not to the extent that she's so happy about her sacrifice that she didn't come back to haunt Kynan a little bit so now um, she's hanging out with him and needling him and perhaps wanting something from him perhaps she's the reason we have our background vow. So that's something we should find out in the next session. I hope to see you then. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you next time.